Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing some very fun, tasty looking dessert ideas that are perfect for Christmas. Really excited to make these. I've made a couple before and they were really good. A couple are new, so we will see how those turn out, but I'm excited to go ahead and start making them. So the very first thing I'm gonna start making today is something I've seen going around all over the place. It looks really good and it contains a Christmas staple, which are the Christmas tree cakes. So I'm making the Little Debbie Christmas tree dip. Um, I've seen it a lot of places, it looks so good. So I have my Christmas trees. I have three of the larger size Christmas trees, two blocks of cream cheese, thing of Cool Whip, some sprinkles, vanilla extract, and I don't have regular milk, but I have almond milk, so I'm gonna try using that. So, I think we're only gonna use one stick of cream cheese, but I've never made this before, and there were no, like, flat out directions on the post I saw, so we're just gonna kinda wing it, make sure everything looks okay. I made the Reese's dip that was similar to this, like, at Thanksgiving, so I think I got the gist of it, so we're gonna try it see how it goes. I went ahead and melted or softened my cream cheese in a bowl um, just to make sure it will get all mixed in right. Next I'm going to go ahead and add probably close to the full container of Cool Whip in here. You can never have too much Cool Whip. It's one of the most amazing things you'll ever eat. Let's so just add in that full container. Kind of got to save some for later, of course. And then the Christmas trees. I'm going to go ahead and add in all three. I think just because I want it flavored very much like a Christmas tree cake, you know. Alright, once this is all together, I'm just going to add like a tablespoon of vanilla, just a capful. And then I'm just gonna use my hand mixer and mix it all together. All right, it's well mixed. I tried to get as much as the cake texture out as I could. So it's not like, I don't know, weird at all. But I'm gonna go ahead and add just some little um, Christmas sprinkles to it. The recipe calls for sprinkles, so I figured might as well. Add something to color it up. And then just give it another quick mix. Okay, so and that's it. That's like the whole the whole recipe right here. That seems super easy. So I'm gonna go ahead and try it and see how it is. And I didn't end up using the milk at all. It doesn't really seem like it needs milk. Like it's pretty it's a pretty good consistency as it is. So we'll see. Okay. Here we go, we'll see. I'm a little bit worried. I don't want it to like ruin my expectations of what it what I hoped it would be. So it tastes okay. Definitely, I wouldn't be able to tell you that it tastes like a Christmas tree cake. I can definitely get the frosting. I'm getting a lot of cream cheese also. So I wonder if I put too much cream cheese in, but it is pretty good. Like it's a decent dip. Like if I was gonna eat that with cookies, I'd be very happy to eat that with cookies, but I would just not be able to say that's a Christmas tree dip, but it is pretty good. <clears throat> so that was pretty good. It's still, it's growing on me, definitely. But my next recipe is gonna be for Oreo bark, and it, this one is super simple. All you need are some Oreo things, some white almond bark, and some chocolate almond bark. I've never tried this one either, but it looks really good, so I think, and it's pretty simple, so you can't really go wrong with bark, but you will also need some sprinkles. And I just have like Christmas trees and then regular of the ones I still used in the Christmas tree dip, but I don't know if I'll have enough of those for like the whole thing, but we're gonna try it. So I'm gonna go ahead and melt some white chocolate to start off with. Be right back. Okay, so the white chocolate is melted. In the video I watched, she took the Oreos and dipped it in the white chocolate before putting it on the cookie tray. I went ahead and lined the cookie tray and did a quick like grease on it. Oh, these are teeny tiny. Look how thin those are. Oh, those are cute. Okay, so she just 
dipped the Oreo in the white chocolate. How am I going to do this? It's going to be messy. And then pulled it out. And then stuck it right down on the tray. So that's what I'm going to do also. Which will be an interesting process. have been dipped and are on the tray so I went ahead and did like not too many Oreos like I could have squeezed them all together and made another row but I just went ahead and made like you know divided out the first and I think that will be good so next I might have to make some more white chocolate we will see but she just went ahead and I'm definitely gonna have to make some more white chocolate and just dump all the white chocolate on there. So I'll go ahead and start spreading that out. Ooh, that already looks so good. All right, I'm gonna go melt some more white chocolate and hopefully get this done before that happens. Okay. Got the rest of the white chocolate melted. I ended up using like that whole bar of white chocolate and I still feel like it's not gonna be enough, but look with what you got. So, I wonder if my, I'm wondering if my pan was like a little bit too big. as I could and spread it all around so now to melt the dark chocolate and then I'm just gonna start the opposite way and bring it forward in hopes that it covers the rest of the spots that I missed okay so melted more chocolate you definitely can't say there's not enough chocolate in this recipe because I use almost two full bars of that bark so now, I'm just going to drizzle it on the opposite way so it takes up some more space. And, all right, that's smoothing out so much better. I feel like dipping the Oreos might have been unnecessary and used precious chocolate that you could have had for, like, covering it. So I don't know if I would do that again because they did kind of still slide around when I was like using the chocolate, you know? All right.
All right, this looks so good. Now I'm just gonna top it off with some sprinkles. I'm gonna use some of my big Christmas tree sprinkles on this one. And then some small. Ooh, that looks super Christmassy. Look how festive that is. That's so pretty. Might as well finish off those sprinkles. Okay, so now I'm gonna stick this in the fridge for probably about an hour or so, and then break it up into pieces, but it looks super festive, I love it. All right, moving over to the stove for this next recipe, and this is one of my absolute all-time favorite recipes to make. I've been making it since last year, I think, but it's one of the most wonderful things you'll ever see. And you're probably wondering, why are you cutting Velveeta cheese? And that is because this is Velveeta fudge. And it is absolutely amazing. So, we're going to go ahead and plunk a pound of Velveeta cheese into our pot. I'm making double. So, if you don't want as much, then don't make double. Just half everything I'm doing. So, one pound of Velveeta cheese is in there. And then I'll be putting in four sticks of butter. And this is probably one of the most amazing fudge recipes you will ever taste. And it's really good, even though it has Velveeta cheese in it and it sounds disgusting. It's amazing. So, I'm actually making double because I'm planning on giving this out for Christmas gifts. Like, making all the treats to hand out for people that I work with or just friends or whoever. So... That's why I need a lot, and I like to eat a lot, so I'm making extra. It does kind of throw you off when you're eating it, I mean for me, since I make it, thinking, oh, it has Velveeta cheese in it, but everyone I've given this to says you would not be able to tell at all. So anyway, I'm going to be putting this on low for until it's super melted, all nice and melted together. Okay, so it's already starting to melt. I just walked away from it for a minute to get my kitchen a little bit cleaned up from all the messes I've made. And it is already starting to melt. The Velveeta does take a good bit more effort to melt than the butter does. Just because, like, I don't know why. But the melted butter really helps to break it down and, like, dissolve it all. But I tell you, once you try this fudge and see how easy it is to make, you won't be going back to any other fudge recipe. And you can put nuts in this, you could put sprinkles in this, you could put marshmallows, I don't know, whatever you put in your normal fudge recipe, you can put in this fudge recipe. And it's really good. But I'm just going to go ahead and start breaking up the Velveeta into little squares just so in hopes that it will keep melting. Okay, once everything, all the butter and the cheese is melted together, we're going to move it into a mixing bowl. And I am going to add one cup of cocoa. And that is it for both batches. So if you're only making one batch, it's just gonna be half a cup. But since I'm doubling it, ooh, I'm going to add cocoa. So go ahead and dump that in. And then we're going to be making, or not making, we're going to be putting in two tablespoons of vanilla. So, one and two. And I'm just going to go ahead and give this a good mix just with my little spatula thing just to start to get it combined. And you can already see it's turning into like a super chocolatey, delicious looking mixture. So good. Okay, it's time for our final ingredient. And you will probably pass out when I tell you. We're going to put in this double recipe, four pounds of powdered sugar. So two bags worth of powdered sugar. And this is what probably is what makes it so good is because you're like literally eating nothing but sugar. And it's amazing. 
So I'm going to go ahead and dump the full first bag in. I love seeing this powdered sugar among a chocolatey backdrop. It's just so satisfying to me. So, there's the first bag fully in. Now with the spatula, I'm going to just combine it a little bit before I start mixing it with the hand mixer. Just so we don't get powdered sugar everywhere. And if I really wanted to, I probably should have put this in two batches instead of all at once. But it's okay. What happened? We've already done it. So. Okay, so the first bag is well combined in there. As you can see, it's like not sticking to the bowl at all because of how much like fat is in there from the butter and the Velveeta. And it makes cleanup really easy. But I'm gonna go ahead and add the second bag of powdered sugar in there. And that really gives it, this is really what thickens it up. And then of course, after it goes into the fridge, then um, the Velveeta will harden. And it's all mixed in there, so it just gives the fudge a really nice Okay, so now that the fudge mixture is completely mixed up, I'm going to go ahead and spray my cookie sheets. I might need more than two, we'll see. Oh, it's so heavy. And we will just divide out however much fudge we want on the tray. If you want it thin, if you want it thick, just add more or less, whatever. Oh, this bowl is like super heavy. All right. So. I'll do probably a little more than that on this pan. And then hopefully the rest will fit on that pan. And then just Spread it out. You can spray your spatula if you want. It'll make it a little bit easier to spread around. Or you can use your hands, whatever. This is the same spatula I used for the butter, so it's pretty well greased already. And all you're gonna do is spread it out. And then, like if you wanna top it with anything, you can. If you wanna put some nuts on it, you could also mix some nuts into it. And then we're just gonna put it in the fridge for a couple hours just until it's nice and firm. Okay, so this has been in the fridge for probably two hours. So I'm gonna go ahead and break it up the best I can. It is kind of sticking to the tin foil, so I am glad I sprayed it. Ooh, that's bad.
I have to say this looks very pretty. It looks like just like Christmas. There's some big pieces, some little pieces. It was kind of hard to break apart, but it's super cute. I think it was worth it.